Hey guys, Randy Sullivan here, Florida Baseball Ranch. I think we can all agree that if you want to be a better baseball player, if you want to be a better hitter, a pitcher, or a throwing athlete, you could probably benefit from being a better athlete. A lot of people think that you can learn to throw harder or learn to hit the ball better by by simply changing your mechanics. Well, that's a part of it, but it's a small part when compared to the overall athleticism that has to undergird or surround actually the whole thing. And so, but for a long time, this thing that we call athleticism was so mysterious and then the absence of evidence as to how it would happen in some kids and not in others, we turned to the genetic freak theory. We just thought, well, they must be just gifted and there's nothing we can do. But as we began to study Franz Bosch's material and began to get deeper and deeper into the science of motor learning and skill acquisition, we now understand that this thing they call athleticism is, is, is something that can be trained if we understand its fundamental components. And here they are. What I'm going to do right now is give you the definition of this thing they call athleticism. And then I'm going to break it down into its parts and explain each one. And then you'll understand how it now can be trained and, that, and now we know how to do it. And that is why our guys are becoming such elite throwing and hitting athletes. They're just making progress like never before. I want to share that with you. So the definition of athleticism is this. Athleticism is merely having enough mobility to get into biomechanically advantageous positions that optimize link tension relationships and then being able to co-contract to remove muscle slacks so that you can move out of those positions rapidly and express power and motor control and to attenuate the stresses on inert tissues like UCLs, labrums and things like that. Okay, So let's break that down. First of all, mobility. We know that you have to have adequate range of motion to get your body into positions that optimize your performance, that optimize your ability to express power. But for a long time, uh, people neglected that. When we got into to working on that several years back, it was going great. But then I noticed two things. One, people went a little too far. A lot of people are going way too far and spending hours upon hours working on mobility, trying to get more and more and more range of motion in joints. Well, let me tell you, more is not better. There are a lot of great performing athletes that aren't exactly flexible like a gymnast. They're not as mobile as a gymnast, but what they do have is control of what they have. So I would rather you have more, 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 control of less mobility than to be more mobile and have less control of it. So too many people I think are wasting a lot of time doing passive stretches that, that add range of motion to joints that we not, now don't have motor control of, which is both unproductive and oftentimes not safe. So, so that's the mobility part. You have to get into these positions. You have to be able to get into these positions. Next, you have to have the ability to optimize link tension relationships. What does that mean? Well, every muscle or group of muscles has a length at which it's most strong. My biceps are weak here because they're too long. They're weak here because they're too short, but in the middle, they're very strong. And so what we have to do is in these dynamic positions as we're moving through and to, uh, to and through these positions, we have to be able to find optimal length and each guy's optimal length is a little bit different. There's no set place. Aurelis Chapman gets so far into his glutes that he, he has a lot of flexion in his, in his back leg and hip. And then other guys don't flex their legs as much and they can express power too. The thing is, everybody's, diff everybody's different. And so instead of trying to chase some ideal model, we have to create a training experience that helps you, uh, helps you self-organize where your optimal length is on every position that you're going to be moving to and through. Uh, so that you can express power. Now, once we get to those positions where we can optimize link tension relationships, now we have to be able to co-contract and move out of those positions. Co-contraction is what we use to remove muscle slack. What is muscle slack? Your muscles don't sit on your bones ready to produce force or power even to establish motor control. Your muscles hang off of there. They're not ready. They're, they're, they're on slack, like a rope hanging off a clothesline, but more so in three dimensions based on the orientation of the fibers of the muscle. So before you can express power, you have to take up the slack in the system. And so what does it mean? So here's the thing that we call muscle slack right here, okay? If I'm getting ready to run and I'm, my, my body's all loose and I take off, that's neither efficient nor powerful nor under control. But if I do this right before I go, that move that I did where I isometrically tensed up all the muscles around a joint or limb, that is co-contraction. So for example, right now, my biceps, my triceps, my scapular muscles, my deltoids, my forearm muscles, my hand are all isometrically co-contracted. There's no slack in my arm. And so that's what we have to do to be able to move to and through these positions and establish motor control and express power is we have to co-contract and take the slack out of the system. So once again, athleticism is having enough mobility to get into biomechanically advantageous positions that optimize link tension relationships, and then being able to co-contract to remove muscle slack so that you can move out of those positions and express power 
and have motor control. If you don't take away muscle slack and optimize link tension, you can't produce power, not enough. If you don't remove muscle slack and, and get into optimal link tension relationships, you can't have motor control, you can't have control of coordinated movements. And if you don't remove muscle slack and get into optimally uh, lengthened muscles, you cannot take, you cannot attenuate the stresses on tissue like UCLs and labrums. So to perform better, to throw harder, to hit the ball harder, to, to run faster, to be more agile, to be a better athlete, and to protect your body from injury, you must have the ability to get into biomechanically advantageous positions that optimize link tension relationships and then co-contract to remove muscle slack so you can express power and have motor control. That's the definition of athleticism. Now that we understand it, now we know how to teach it. Now, can I stand here and go, hey man, I need you to Tighten your quads, your glutes, your inner thigh, your outer thigh, the internal and external rotators, and all the fascia around your hip. And I need you to do that as you move down the mountain or as you make your swing. No, it doesn't work that way. You can't get there through a cognitive or a verbal input. That would be silly. Instead, what I have to do is I have to create a training experience that encourages your body to self-organize co-contraction out of optimally lengthened tissue. So that's the whole that's the whole thing that we do here. It, with a constraint-led approach to training, we set up training situations that that encourage your body to optimize its link tension relationships and then to be able to co-contract to express power and have motor control of that and when we do that when we do our thorough assessment and we identify where are you uh, unstable where are the where are the instabilities in the system and then we challenge them with more instability they self-organize to stabilize themselves that's the nature of dynamic systems theory that's how we operate that's what savage training is all about specific adaptation through variability attractors and goal-directed experiences we attack unstable movements in our weight room we attract we attack it in our drill work in our um, skill work we attack it in our recovery we attack it in our warm-ups we attack it in our movement enhancement or our mobility exercises it's a global approach that gives us a solution to a complex problem. We're not gonna find linear relationships here. We have to attack it globally, and that's what we do here. We wanna encourage you to get involved. Give us a call at any time, 866-STRIKE-3, 866-787-4533. We'll tell you all about it. We'll arrange for you to come down here and let us do an evaluation on you, and we'll find out where you're un unstable, and we'll help you address those instabilities with world-class training processes that help you get where you wanna go. You'll throw the ball harder, you'll hit the ball harder. You'll, you'll have better command, you'll be safer, you'll be more healthy, you'll be less likely to become injured, and we'll help you get to where you can throw enough to get better and where you can hit enough to get better. And we'll do that through this Savage Training Experience. We want to invite you to come here. Give us a call anytime. 866-STRIKE-3, 866-787-4533.